In the heart of a small, forgotten town stood an ancient clock shop, long abandoned and covered in dust. The storefront was dark, its windows thick with grime, and the name Garrett's Clocks and Timepieces barely legible beneath years of neglect. The building seemed frozen in time, much like the clocks within it, their hands forever stopped at strange, random hours. For decades, no one had dared to enter. Locals avoided the place, crossing the street when they walked past, speaking of it only in whispers. They called it cursed, though no one knew the full story of why. Some said old Mr. Garrett had gone mad. Others claimed the clocks had driven him to it. Molly didn't believe in curses or haunted shops. She had moved to the town for a quiet life, far from the noise of the city. She had heard the rumors about the clock shop, but to her, it was just another run-down building in need of repair. An eyesore that might, with some effort, be restored to its former charm. Curiosity got the better of her one evening as she passed by the shop on her way home. The sun had just dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the street. She paused, staring at the faded sign, her eyes drifting to the darkened interior through a small crack in the window. It wasn't as if the building was locked up tight. The door looked worn, and the lock was barely holding the rotted wood together. Without giving herself time to second guess, Molly tried the door. It creaked open with an agonizing groan. Inside, the air was heavy with dust, the smell of old wood and rusting metal filling her lungs. Clocks of every shape and size lined the walls, their faces frozen in time, their pendulums still. The sound of her own footsteps echoed unnervingly loud in the otherwise silent shop. Her breath caught as she approached the counter, eyeing the collection of clocks that stood behind it. One, in particular, stood out to her. It was a tall, ornate grandfather clock, its wood intricately carved with twisting vines and strange symbols she didn't recognize. The clock's face was pristine, gleaming gold against the shadowy backdrop of the shop. Unlike the others, its hands were moving, but not in the usual rhythmic tick-tock she expected. No, this clock's hand spun in slow, lazy circles, sometimes forwards, sometimes backward, as if time itself was confused. Molly reached out, her fingers brushing the smooth surface of the clock. For a moment, she felt the faintest vibration beneath her hand, like a pulse, alive and waiting. And then, just as quickly, it stopped. But something else had changed. The shop, once silent, now filled with the soft ticking of clocks. Every single timepiece in the room had started again, their hands moving, their pendulums swinging in unison. The air grew heavier, the ticking growing louder, faster, filling her ears until it was all that she could hear. Molly stepped back, her heart racing. It didn't make sense. These clocks had been dead for years, maybe decades. Yet now they were alive, marking time with relentless precision. She turned to leave, but the door had been so easy to open was now shut tight. Panic rose in her chest as she pulled at the handle but it wouldn't budge. She turned back toward the room, her eyes darting from clock to clock, their faces now spinning faster, their hands a blur. And then she saw it, the figure of an old man, hunched over, standing in the back corner of the shop. He wore an old-fashioned suit, his hair wild and unkempt, his eyes dark and sunken. His fingers twitched as he worked on a small, delicate timepiece, his back to her, Mr. Garrett? Molly's voice trembled, though she wasn't sure why she was even asking. The figure didn't respond, his hands still busy with the clock in front of him, but something about him felt wrong. His movements were jerky, mechanical, as though he were nothing more than a puppet, and she could hear the faint grinding of gears as he worked, though there were no visible machines. Gathering her courage, Molly took a step forward, Sir, I'm sorry to intrude, but... He stood up abruptly, turning to face her, his eyes locked onto hers, and she realized with horror that they weren't eyes at all, but empty sockets, dark and endless. His mouth twisted into a grimace, 
though his lips didn't move. The voice that echoed through the room wasn't his, but came from everywhere at once, low and rasping. You shouldn't have touched the clock. Molly froze, her body trembling with fear. I, I didn't mean... The timekeeper knows, the voice whispered, growing louder. It knows you now. With a sound like grinding gears, the old man's body shuddered, his limbs twitching unnaturally. His head jerked to the side, and his mouth opened wide, far wider than should have been possible. The ticking of the clocks reached a deafening crescendo, the sound pounding in Molly's skull. She backed away, her heart slamming in her chest as the room began to blur. The hands of the clock spun faster, and with each turn, the world around her seemed to shift, distorting like a funhouse mirror. The walls stretched, the floor tilted, and the old man's twisted figure seemed to grow taller, looming over her, his empty eyes fixed on her. And then, silence. The clock stopped, their hands frozen mid-spin. The room was still again, but it was different. The air was thicker, darker, and the world outside the shop seemed distant, unreachable. Molly turned toward the door, and to her horror, it was no longer a simple wooden frame, but a solid, seamless wall. Trapped. Panic surged through her. She ran to the window, but the glass reflected only darkness. No street, no town, just a black void stretching out forever. She was still in the clock shop, but not in her time. The ticking began again, slow and deliberate. The old man's voice echoed through the room, faint but clear. Time has claimed you. It cannot be undone. Molly turned, her eyes wide with terror, but the old man was gone. The only thing left was the ticking, growing louder, closer. She was no longer a visitor in the clockmaster's shop. She was part of it now, and the clocks would never stop ticking. Some say the shop is still there, hidden from sight, a relic of time, but those who pass by swear they hear a soft ticking inside, even though the door remains locked. And if you listen closely, you might hear the faint whisper of a woman's voice, lost in time, forever. <laughs>